Dr. Justin Skrinsky here. As a COVID doctor, I just received the second dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, and it did not go as well as the first one. I got my injection around 1 p.m., felt great, even went to the gym that evening, but by later that night, I was already starting to feel pretty bad. But first, before we go on with story time, pop quiz, hot shot. Your patient is crashing. Blood pressure is 70 over 30 and falling. Can you even feel a pulse? You look at the monitor, ventricular fibrillation. You have seconds to act. The only cure is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Charge that index finger to 200. Are you ready? Can you feel the power? Say it with me. Clear! Excellent work, doctor. The patient will live for now. Ooh, when I woke up the morning after getting my vaccine, I had a fever of 109, bad headache. I felt kind of like I got hit by a bus. I was very sick. Hey, uh, hey bro, what, uh, what you doing? Doing a uh, little YouTube video here. Yeah, I'm doing a YouTube video here. I was just saying how sick I was. Oh, sick, you want sick? Check out this bicep, bro, I got you sick right here. The singular is actually still biceps after the two heads of the biceps brachii muscle. Who, uh, who was that guy? Who is that guy? Who are you? Oh, me? Bro, you know me, I'm, uh, I'm Mo's cousin. Enough. There's too many of them. And we all know what happens when there's too many of them. There's too many of them. I'm here! Fever, fatigue, headaches, body aches, lymph adenopathy, so swollen lymph nodes. If you look at the FDA document, that one didn't even make it onto the table. It's in the paragraph underneath. I had that. My right armpit was hurting and I was like, why the f is my right armpit hurting? So I pretty much had every side effect on the list. Hey bro, bro, the only side effect I had was massive arm swelling, you know? Will you please stop? Not to why me about this, but the percentages for these things aren't too terribly high. Fever about 16%, headache about 52%, chills 35%, muscle pain 37%, joint pain about 22%. And here we're looking at side effects after the second dose in the 18 to 55 age range, which is me. Now I'm not sure how much overlap there is, meaning I don't know how many people had just one isolated symptom versus all of them. But after being the one to say how fun and easy easy it was to get vaccinated, of course they would all happen at once to me. After you get the vaccine, they ask you to participate in vSafe, which is the FDA program to try to help track side effects. When I logged the side effects, the site was basically like, you okay, baby? Now, after hearing my sob story, you might be asking, is the cure worse than the disease? The answer is no. With actual COVID, you can get strokes, blood clots in your lung, pulmonary fibrosis, which is horrifying. It's basically scarred up lung tissue. Basically things that are permanent you may never recover from. And if you're young like me, these could be debilitating for the rest of your life. The vaccine may make you feel crappy for a little bit, but I would much rather take that than lose half my body to a stroke. Half your body, you mean like down the middle? I mean, potentially. Well, how would one go about bench pressing after such a uh, adverse event like that? Well, you wouldn't. Oh, well, shoot me up with more of that vaccine then, dog. I'm not afraid of needles if you catch my drift. I finally broke down and took 800 of Motrin and I was right as rain. You may ask, why would you not want to be taking Motrin? The answer is because there is a theoretical risk of a blunted and consequently incomplete immune response with over-the-counter antipyretic medications. Yes, what my friend meant to say is that taking things like Motrin, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or Tylenol, all of which are antipyretic or fever-reducing medications, may theoretically blunt the immune response. These medications work on an enzyme called cyclooxygenase, or COX. <laughs> What? I mean, you just said, you know. No, I don't know. What did I say? I, it, it's fine. Just, it, it's fine. Anyway, the idea is that if you blunt the fever and inflammatory response, you could also potentially blunt the immune response and perhaps not get as complete protection from the vaccine. In actuality, it's probably something you really don't need to worry about. In this paper from 2016, the authors describe how antipyretics can cause a potential reduced antibody response of unclear significance, but this is mostly true for novel immunization, so the first dose of a vaccine, for instance. We don't see that antibody reduction effect when antipyretics are given with a booster, so like the second dose of the coronavirus vaccine that 
messed me up, or if you wait at least four hours after your injection to take things like Tylenol or Motrin. So if you really wanna be safe about it, wait at least a few hours after your injection and then just treat your symptoms as needed. If you look at the CDC handout for what to expect with a vaccination, they specifically say to ask your doctor about taking these medications. So at least from the CDC, there's no warning against taking them, for instance. So ask, but don't ask me. You see, I am a doctor, but I'm not your doctor, because frankly, I'm not getting paid for that. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in the next video. There's too many of them. I'm here!